Hi, welcome to my first ever tutorial. I've never done one of these before, so bear with me. It's going to be a little rough. I'm going to try to piece together a lot of the things that I've done and, and continue to do while making these Pacific Rim Uprising Jaeger helmets. It was um, a trial and error process. I had a prototype I made before, which included um, one 24 by 24 sheet of EVA foam. And I can, you know, give you some information as to where to buy it locally, at least, at least around um, here in the US. Uh, Harbor Freight is probably the cheapest you're gonna find right now. It's about $8.99 for a four pack. And um, anything else like Lowe's or Home Depot, you're going to find them at around $24 for a four-pack. BJ's, Costco, or any of those wholesalers will have them at around $9 for an eight-pack. So that is a pretty good deal as well, but you have to watch out with those because um, the pattern on the back of the, the wholesale ones is not this pattern, this heat-treated heat side. It's more of the diamond uh, diamond pattern that's out there. And th those are great to work with if you are planning on using that side. Otherwise, if you just want to make things that will um, adhere to another piece of EVA foam, you will need to sa <clears throat> excuse me, sand those down because it will it, it's just not gonna work very well. It'll stick for a brief moment, but because of the, of the raised pattern, it's, it's just not gonna work very well. Um, I can also provide other, other information as, as far as, um, you know, getting other materials if you need them. I've, I've found some pretty good deals. Uh, I've learned all that I, that I know from foam smithing through two excellent YouTube, um, personalities, I guess you could say. Uh, the first guy being Evil Ted Smith, so make sure you check him out. <laughs> You're probably not even going to need my tutorial because he's got a ton that are great, easy to follow. Again, I was able to learn from scratch, um, not knowing anything about EVA back in 2015. Um, so there you have it. If anything, just follow along. I'll try to go as slowly as possible and I'll try to um, make sense of whatever I'm doing. And any of the templates that I do and create, I have them, I will provide a link in the video description. Um, and how to print them out so you can make your own Jaeger pilot helmets. As I mentioned, this is um, this is, these paper tutorials that I've created are I just I just started doing this for this build um, primarily because I will be making eight different uh, not different well eight Jaeger pilots and I'm hoping that I will have some people come over from my cosplay group and help me out on this so I can easily print these out. Um, additionally, since they are at a, a distance away, I can just send them the files and have them do it themselves from home. And you, with the, you know, the, you viewers can also benefit from that. And um, I've eliminated the, the hard work of actually trying to map out all of the pieces that go with this helmet. First thing you're going to do is you're going to want to cut out all of these pieces. Um, you're going to see these areas that have, that have dotted lines. And with the letter, you will just match those letters up with the corresponding side. Uh, I pieced them out so they will fit on a standard 8.5 by 11 printer paper. And we'll start cutting these out. When cutting, when the templates that I created, um, you're going to want to cut on the outside of the actual line. Um, the reason for that is that I, I scaled it down to the size according to the different measurements I have taken of my group or you can you can try to use the templates yourself and try to scale it to whatever size you have for your head. If your head's larger um, you're gonna want to take the template and print it out at 80, uh, no, 75 percent um, if your head is a standard medium size, I, I do have a standard medium template already created, so there's no scaling for that one, except you have to make sure you print it out at 100%. Um, for smaller heads, maybe a child's head, you can print it at about 60 to 65%.
you're going to see these registration marks. You will want to cut those out because it will make it easier when you transfer these templates over to your EVA foam. All right, once you have all the, uh, the patterns cut out, you're going to tape them together. Uh, first, side, well, first one is the right side of the helmet is in three pieces, so match up B to B, A to A, and tape them together. Okay, now that I've taped all of the pieces together, I'm going to transfer this over to EVA foam. You're, if you're asking or wondering, if you've never done this before, why is it only one side? It's because you're, once you're going to take the pattern and you're going to flip it over. This is the right side of the helmet. Flip it over, then you're going to have the left side of the helmet. And this is um, this is just for the base part of the helmet. So just for this main unit. All of these little details, I have patterns, uh, template patterns that you can also print out uh, once we get to that step. Right now that you've gotten all of the pieces transferred over to EVA, as you can see, I had one one side, and then I flipped it over for the left side. Four pieces in total. Uh, you should be able to get away with this entire build with just one piece of 24 by 24 foam. And just proceed to cut it out. When you're cutting, make sure you're cutting on the inside of your tracing line. Alright, after you've cut everything out, make sure you, you do get these areas that are marked. This was done to flatten out the pattern, as you can see here. These will be joined together when you glue things together. Next step, heat gun. You don't need to do it for that long. A quick pass on both sides should do the trick. You don't want to leave it on one section for too long. You'll end up burning it. I use my knee to round out this piece. After you've shaped it out a little bit, <clears throat> you can see here where I held it on over there for too long. You can see a little singe. Again, don't worry about it so much. This is a base, base helmet. Um, details will be able to cover any mistakes you make as well as um, you know the ability to use a filler or even painting technique that will hide that so for this one you're going to want to put glue on the inside seam here I'm using barge cement want a light pass initial coating to have it absorb into the foam 
you're going to do about two layers. The first layer and second layer are both, they're not going to be excessive, so you just want to get a nice coating, light coating on it. For this here, make sure you get the insides of these seams, <clears throat> as well as this here, but not this section, because this is this piece here will not have anything attached to it. This piece that you see, this area here, is basically this section. warning about barge cement, you're going to want to do this in a well-ventilated area or and, I should say, and have a respirator because it is considered highly toxic. All right, all you need is, uh, after the second coat, all you need is about 10 minutes for the glue to become tacky and it will stick onto itself. You want to match up the seam as closely as possible to, to save yourself some sanding time, but either way, you will have to sand it down a little bit just to, to smooth out that seam anyway, so don't worry about it. Now these two pieces are the right side, and these two pieces are the left. So you've got these seams all put together, you're going to want to start piecing the entire helmet together, one side at a time. The registration marks that we made in, that we left in the pattern is transferred over and you want those to match up. Always start with the front of the helmet. your way back. I usually 
flip it inside out so I can make sure this seam gets a good seal. I'll leave it like that while I work on the other side. Now, you, you don't have to use barge or contact cement when doing this. You can use hot glue. Um, I have done that before when I first started out doing this. I didn't have barge, but I did have hot glue. And I found that doing this process here took a lot longer because I would apply the hot glue, I'd have to hold it, wait for it to dry. Once, it's, once everything was dry, then I could move to the next section. It just took a long time. Now that we have one side, uh, both sides of the helmet done, as you can see here, we will go put it together. to apply glue to the front chin piece. All right, now that we've finished gluing things together, the overall helmet, the base helmet, has taken shape, and it's time to add the details. I got a bunch of templates that I've already printed out that will, that will outline each of the details that you see on this helmet. So the links for, the links to these will also be included. Cut them out. They come in two pieces. Some of them come in two pieces, so you will need to tape them together. This particular piece is the center ridge. Just match up the letters. And this particular piece, you will be using your floor mat EVA foam. The next thing I'm going to do here is measure out one inch from the end to the in in inner piece here. And what that is, is basically a bevel that I'll be cutting out here. Also, you're going to want to measure one inch from the tip, and that's where you will be affixing the center ridge. My T-square is in my garage, so if I don't have all of my tools with me in the basement, unfortunately. And you just want to connect that to the end so you can cut that bevel out. Uh, 
I hate doing this because it's it's actually a, a difficult thing to, to get accurately. I always mess it up. <laughs> part. This is the tricky part. You want to try to guide the knife to follow this line, but at the same time follow the edge here. So that's I'm gonna make sure this is really sharp. Because I'm not doing this outside or in my garage, um, I'm just going to go ahead and glue this. But I would suggest if you have the time and you want this to last, you're going to want to sand this down. I don't have any sanding products with me down here. So um, the reason for that is the heat treated portion of the EVA foam, if you get the floor mats from any of the hardware stores, this does not hold very well when gluing to itself or to EVA. In general, I think it's because of the heat treatment that causes it to do that. Uh, sanding it down will give it a more porous, uh, I guess, uh, texture that'll allow the glue to adhere. And again, for the sake of saving time and for this tutorial, I'm just going to go ahead and glue it and apply glue to the top of the helmet. As I mentioned, you want to go an inch in. You're going to want to do a center line to make sure you are directly center. And one of the easiest ways to do a center line for this is take your paper pattern, fold it in half, it's not a perfect um, rectangle, it's kind of trapezoidal in, in, in shape. so. You're going to want, the, you know, you can measure it out with where the middle is, but this is just, just as easy, just as fast. Take it, while that's drying we can work on the other pieces. This piece here is the plate that goes on this section. And this piece right here is this plate right here. All right, so now that I've got this piece cut out and this piece, these will be done in two millimeter craft foam. I got a sheet of it from Amazon, um, but I, I kind of prefer working with the eight and a half by 11 or eight by 11 that they have at the craft stores because it's easier to work with. This, there's a sheet, I have to lay it out, I feel like I'm wasting some of it, I don't know, it just, for some reason it doesn't really feel like it's uh, that much more of a savings, but to each his own. Go ahead and trace this out onto the 2 millimeter foam.
And if you have a silver pen or something that works well for you in tracing onto black craft foam, you should use it. I am just being lazy and can't find my silver pen anywhere, so I'm just using black. You can see it very slightly, but you will have to be careful when doing it. You want to do this twice, one for each side. All right, the glue's had time to get sticky. I'm gonna go ahead and apply this. Try to angle it so you can see it on the camera, but I don't want to mess it up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and line it up. Press down firmly. I'm gonna first go ahead and apply it all the way to the back. And then from there, secure everything else. Yep. Okay. Center ridge is in place. The next is getting these pieces attached onto here and also placed properly. The first thing you need to do though is take this piece, which is here, and place it with the pins and trace it out so you can apply the glue to the proper location. This is going to be about, um, I want to say, a quarter of an inch away from this border here. And that's how you replace that. What you, what you want to do is also, you can use this to, to guide it because this is ex this is where it will be lining up and that is at the quarter inch line of the edge. You will notice that this side of okay center ridge is in place. The next is getting these pieces attached onto here and also placed properly. The first thing you need to do though is take this piece, which is here, and place it with the pins and trace it out so you can apply the glue to the proper location. This is going to be about, um, I want to say, a quarter of an inch away from this border here. And that's how you replace that. What you, what you want to do is also, you can use this to, to guide it because this is, ex this is where it will be lining up. And that is at the quarter inch line of the edge. If you have a mannequin head or a dummy head of some sort, foam head works too. Um, it would work out really well because as you can see every time I push down it's there's a little bit of give and making it difficult. To work with sometimes but can I'm tracing it out so I know where to apply the glue you don't want to